In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. This week I'm going to offer the second in our series on new habits for the new year as we try to build a new us. This idea of newness is something we talked about last week, that there is in Christ always newness offered to us. And the only question is whether we take it. So last week we talked about the fact that God gives us the ability to change, that that's built into our spirituality, that when we need to change, and we said confession was one of the main mechanisms for our change, that that is the norm. We shouldn't resist it. Today I want to talk about a habit that is something that at first glance we might all say, okay, good, I got this one. It's something that is so basic to our faith that sometimes we use it as a way of describing our faith. These days we might not say, are you a Christian, are you not a Christian, an Orthodox Christian or otherwise. We say, where do you go to church or do you go to church? So going to church has become the way we define who we are spiritually. And that's for good reason. But if you're thinking, okay, Father, if the habit is going to church, I'm here, I'm good. Believe me, I tell you, by the time we're done, all of us, myself included, hopefully will realize that we have some room for growth. Since the earliest days of the Christian church, gathering together was essential. It defined a Christian. The Christians gathered together once a week, and they called themselves by that action. The word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which means gathered together, pulled out to be together. So that act of coming to church is essential to who we are as Christians. St. Cyprian of Carthage, a very early, important hierarch and writer and theologian of the church, said it this way. He said, one Christian is no Christian. We can call ourselves Christians all we want, but unless we gather together, we give a name to ourselves that belies who we really are. We are Christians by gathering together as Christians and as the church. When do the Christians gather? It's kind of a trick question. It's the first day of the week by one reckoning, the day in which we remember our Lord's resurrection. We hear in the gospel every Matin's gospel on a gospel of the resurrection that it happened on the first day of the week. And so we gather together to define ourselves by our gathering in the risen Christ who rose on the first day. That's why the resurrection is such an important theme on almost every Sunday. Only rarely does it get superseded by another feast. But there's another reckoning for what day we gather on. It's sometimes called the eighth day. How can that be? There are only seven days in the week. And if we count the days by an earthly reckoning of time, that's true, there's only seven days. So what's the eighth day? It's the next day. The next day after the seventh, not only limited by this world, it's the day of the kingdom. If in our growing up we thought the Christian faith was doing something here to go to heaven then, after we die, we are mistaken. Today, right now, when I say now, I don't just mean Sunday, the first day of the week. I refer to the now of the kingdom of heaven. The same kingdom that we hope to go through, go to after we leave this world. And so we can say to ourselves all we want, I want to go to the kingdom. But when the kingdom comes here, if we're not here, then really how much do we want to be in the kingdom? One of the very first things 
that you don't get to hear out here that we hear at the altar when there's a deacon serving is to begin the whole service. The deacon prompts the priest or the bishop, if the bishop is here, and he says, it is time for the Lord to act. But here's the interesting thing. Even though we're going to prompt God to come and act, the word time gets translated time in English. But in Greek, there are two ways of saying time. There's chronos, which is what you see when you look at your watch or your phone and see what time is it. Is it 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock? Then there's another word for time. That word is chairos. It's the appointed time. It's the special, the blessed time. It's the destined time. It's the time of the kingdom. And when the deacon said it is time, he doesn't say, Father, it's 10 o'clock, let's get going. He said it's time, it's the moment of opportunity that the Lord is going to act. And that's what happens at every divine liturgy, every Sunday. So let's dig down a little bit deeper into this coming to church. We all come to church, you all here. But the first of three things I want to tell you about how we go to church is this. Come to church every Sunday. Every Sunday. Now I know some of you live far away. You know we have people that drive up to two hours to come to church. And we understand they might have to adjust their schedule. But for the rest of us, come to church every Sunday. Yes, I know sometimes you get scheduled. Sometimes your boss wants you to work on Sunday. Keep asking. Keep offering some flexibility. Say, put me on another inconvenient shift. I want to be in church on Sunday. And if we work at it, I'm sure 99% of us could be here every Sunday. We are a church, believe it or not, of almost 400 people. There aren't 400 people here this morning. There aren't 400 people here any morning. And if we look at the numbers, what we would say is that for the average parishioner of our church, we're here most Sundays. On average, two out of three. But that average means some are here every Sunday, and some are here one out of four, or one out of ten, or twice out of the year. I'm not here to guilt you. I'm here to say to you that if, and it's an if, if you want to change, If you want God to be real and active in your life, then there are certain changes that we have to make, and this is one of them. Why every Sunday? Because every Sunday it is time for the Lord to act. But there's more reasons. You know, we humans live by cycles. There's a cycle to our days, there's a cycle to our weeks, there's a cycle to our month and to our year. When we put important markers that mark those cycles, those important markers guide us. They push us into the right direction. But all too often, we put unimportant markers that mark our life. I'll give you an example. For many of us, some days myself included, the cup of coffee in the morning is the morning marker. You get up and you go and you make that cup of coffee. Or you go and you drink that cup of coffee. That's an example of an unimportant marker. It's nice, nothing wrong with it. But it's unimportant. When we put important markers in, then those markers push us not just when the marker has come, but for the rest of the time. That's what markers do for us. And so marking our weeks by coming to liturgy every Sunday is absolutely vital for us if we want to live an enlightened, enlivened life. So you might be saying, okay, I'm good. Come every Sunday. So far, so good. Hold on. When the beginning of the liturgy comes, when the deacon says it is time for the Lord to act on most Sundays, most of us aren't here yet. We're on the way, 
best of intentions, this Sunday we were going to make it on time. One more time we tried, and over half of us don't quite make it. Let's talk about why that might be a problem. Let me give you the benefit of a doubt if you're one of our late people. I know you want to come on time. I know probably every week you intend to. But here's a problem in how we schedule our lives. For certain things, we give lots of time. Those of you that cook for holidays, you know how much time you need, and you know no one else gets it. When you send out your husband or somebody to go to the store, and they say, oh, but that's three days away. You get it, and they don't get it. Certain important things take time. And we know if we want to do them well, we can't just pinpoint and say, wait to the very last second, now we go. It doesn't work. Because life doesn't work like clockwork. So here's a very practical tip. Don't define your time so specifically and cut it so close. If you made that change alone, if you're one of those that struggles with being on time, made that change alone, more often than not, you're going to make it here right when you need to be here because you're not cutting it so close. But here's the deeper meaning for why we often do this, and I do it for other things as well. So often we want to limit the time we spend doing something because we have other things we want to do. And so we narrow the time of our margin of leaving or getting ready, whatever it happens to be, because we want to minimize that time. We don't want to come to church, for example, and have to sit and wait. But why not? Why not widen that margin of time? Why not say, it's important I'm there. When the Lord is acting, I need to be there at that moment and not later on. And we'll do that when we raise up the priority of what it means to come to church and understand that we want to be there when the Lord is acting. So we want to come to church every Sunday. We want to come on time. And here's one more. Come to church when it's not Sunday morning. Sometimes we limit our activities to a certain time or a certain day. That's all we think about those things. Think about Christmas. When Christmas comes around, we meditate and we think about the birth of Jesus. It's appropriate to do that. But how many of us think about his incarnation in March or August? Now, there's a reason why the church takes us through those cycles to keep them coming up again. But the point I want to make to you is when things are not in our minds and not there immediately, they go away. And we can do that when church becomes a Sunday morning activity. So I'm going to challenge everybody here. If you're coming to church every Sunday morning, pick one service a month outside of Sunday morning and go to that. Maybe it's Saturday Vespers. Maybe it's Sunday morning matins that happens before liturgy. Maybe it's a feast day. Start with one. Don't start so huge and then we get discouraged. Start with one. If you're already doing that, pick one more. Just one a month. That's probably about 12 hours extra for a whole year. We could all do that. And believe me when I tell you that that change will have ramifications far beyond the hour we spent coming to one more service. I want to say one last thing about how we learn things. We know in every other aspect of our life that it takes insistence and it takes repetition. And I want to talk especially to our parents here. Sometimes our parents will say, oh, it's hard for the kids, it's hard for them to sit still. And it is hard for them, I get that. And it's hard for us as parents to bring our kids to church. I get that too. I never had to deal with it because I was always at the altar. My wife had to deal with the three of them by herself. So I get that it's tough. But other things were tough too. It was tough to potty train our kids. Can you imagine if we left that up to them? How they wanted to learn when they wanted to do that? Yeah, we had to be a little flexible, but we kept working on it 
day in and day out. We don't ask our kids, do you want to eat? We feed them because we love them. So as parents, it's not only our own souls that we're responsible for. We want to work for the upbuilding of the souls of our children. And having good habits of coming to church every week without fail whenever possible. On time, because God is important enough. And not only on Sunday morning, because he's not a Sunday morning only God. We heard in this beautiful liturgy today that these lepers were healed. And one of them, only one, came back and fell down at Jesus' feet and offered him thanks. That word to fall down is the same word we use for worship. Oh, come with us, worship, and fall down before God, our King. That leper that was healed, cleansed, and returned to give thanks and to worship God, he's our hero in today's gospel. And he's our role model for us. We have to come back. We go through life, and yes, we have our struggles, but we also have our blessings. How many countless blessings every day? So let's come back when it's time to go to church every Sunday, on time, and at other times as well. And let's join that grateful former leper and fall down at the feet of Jesus and give him thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.